pressing on the upper way. New heights I'm gaining every day, but still I'm praying as I'm heaven bound. Plant my feet on high, your ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. But still I'm praying as I'm heaven bound. Plant my feet on high. journey that lies ahead is not an easy journey. I'm reminded when the apostles were given their mandate from God 
Yes. And they were all on fire and ready to go. Right. But he said, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Go to the upper room, the room. and wait there to you be endued with power from on high. Yes. See, you can lift all the weights you want, yes. but that, that ain't the power from on high. That's right, Father. The power from on high when you get down on your knees and pray Amen. two, three, four times a day. Amen. But the Bible instructs us to wait on the Lord. But it also says be of good courage. Amen. When we endure the various difficulties of life, and we lean on Jesus and don't ever hold your brother or your sister as a result of you going through a test. All right, Bob. And don't never take it out on your brother and your Amen. sister when you go through a test. Amen. Not speaking, not being courteous to your brother and sister, that's not of God. Amen. That's a wrong spirit. When God was looking for someone, and I've shared this often, but I want you to bear with me a minute. All right, great. He was looking for someone to bring forth the seed that would eventually be the birth of the Christ child. All right. Yes. Now keep in mind, there's a divine God, but there's also a physical God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now when Jesus was born of Mary, that was a human body. That's right. Yeah. That human body suffered every affliction that any other human body would suffer. If you remind or uh, be remindful of when God was in the garden paradise, and by him being of a divine nature, he looked through the portal of time and saw Calvary, the cross, yes. Yes. and him hanging there. Now, in that garden of Gethsemane, yes, yes. the Bible says he fell on his face and prayed to God, the Spirit, yes. take this from me. In other words, he saw the nails being driven in his hands and all the torture and the torment hanging there on the cross. Right. You know, when you're hanging on a cross and a fly happens to buzz by or be, uh -huh. and in them days, this is close. They had birds that were like ravens. Yep. And they would actually pluck out the eyes yep. of the people on the cross. Because, right. you know, blowing your, ain't going to blow them away. <laughs> All right. So don't think that Calvary was some this uh, figment of someone's imagination. No. Calvary was a real torment. Jesus foreseen this in the garden. And he said, Father, take this from me. But then he caught hold to himself and realized he was a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Nevertheless, that will be done. When we are going through our tests and trials, have we ever prayed, Lord, thank you, that will be done? Amen. Do you always pray a prayer, deliver me from that brother or that sister? Don't ever pray that prayer. Amen. There's nothing wrong with your brother or your sister, except they need more Jesus. Amen. Like you do. All of us can use a little bit more Jesus Amen. through the Spirit. So, in this journey, we have a togetherness as a family. Yes. I'm telling you, and I've told you often, as a family, we have to stick together. We are not just a natural family. We are a spiritual Amen. family right, right. bound together by the same spirit of Christ. All right. yeah. I can't get mad at you for a moment. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you acted. Maybe you didn't act right to me. <laughs> Maybe I didn't act right to you. All right. So when we understand that we are a family together, going through the same test and trials together, Let's put aside all foolishness. Amen. And let's come together as two brothers and sisters and not bear grudges against one another. Amen. Amen. If you have been reprimanded, take it with gladness and joy. All right. It's something to bring you up to a higher level. Yes. 
Hallelujah. But we have to be together because there is a danger outside that door and an enemy outside that door who don't take no prisoners, church. Listen, you'll make your back slide in a moment's notice. This is why you've got to keep your mind steadfast on Jesus. You've got to have a made up spiritual integrity within yourself that develops a strength. You can call it mental strength or whatever kind of strength you want to call it. But it's a spiritual strength. That's right. You can't see it. You can't listen. You can dip weights and all you want, but that ain't gonna get get that spiritual strength. That's right, right, right. You get that spiritual strength by getting on your knees and praying right. and submitting yourself under the mighty hand of God. Yes. And don't look at natural circumstances all the time, though we're in a natural body. Right. No misunderstanding. But you can't keep dwelling on the problem that you're facing in this natural atmosphere. Otherwise, you'll never make it. But if you can cast aside all of those natural burdens and lean on the promise of God that I got a better place for you after the journey. But I got to go through a journey. Give me Ruth chapter 2. And I want you to jump right in at verse 2. Now watch close. And keep in mind, in the story of Ruth, some take it this where it's a nice story and gone. That's the story ought to dwell with you for quite a while. Amen. Jesus had to put a uh, pick between two peoples who would bear the seed that would eventually bring forth the Christ child. Amen. Two sisters, people in the church, which one will follow Christ? Amen. And which one will reject and go back to the world? Right. That's what it actually the story amounts to. All right. You know, Oprah hugged Naomi and cried her heart out. But she went back. Sure it is, right. Watch close. Naomi told Ruth, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people. Yes. And note she made a distinction between her people. All right, right. Amen. And said to Ruth, why don't you go back to your people also? But Ruth said, wait a minute. You done told me something about this Jehovah God. The Bible don't say so, but we know. Because Ruth said, your people shall be my people. And your God shall be what? My God. And where you go, I'm going with you. And treat me not to go. In other words, she said, I beg you, don't drive me away. And when Naomi saw that testimony, and the God of glory saw it also, all right. Naomi took Ruth with her. Okay. Now pick me up in uh, chapter 2, verse 2. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I Now Naomi him. took upon a burden of responsibility when she got to the land of the promise, which was Naomi's land. She said, Now let me go in the field and work. Read that again. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him. I believe him. you said Ruth the Moabitess? Yes. yes uh -oh. She's from the tribe of Moab? Amen. Read. And glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. Mm -hmm. and, sh and she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Oh, oh, oh wait. <laughs> Praise God. Let me go and struggle over here and let me do this and let me do it. And so I said, oh, no, you don't have to do that. No, Ruth said, go ahead. See, God is testing her credibility and her character. If you really, the seed that I want to bring forth to Christ, I've got to send you through something. If you're in the latter-day church, God's got to send you through something. Can you take it when everything goes against you? Can you take it when maybe somebody in the church don't like you and don't speak to you? But what difference does it make as long as God loves you? What do you care about somebody liking you? And why do you let that affect your relationship that you have with God by carrying something deep down in your bosom? That's right, brother. That's really destroying you and you don't even know it. Amen. See, dislike turns to hatred. That's right. And hatred is a cancer. That's right. That'll destroy the spirit because it kept eating and eating and eating like a cancer. That's right. So you've got to get rid of all that foolishness. Amen. Now, when Ruth 
was sent to bring forth that blessed seed, God still wanted to go through another severe test, go out there in the field and work. Yeah, right. Didn't have no air conditioning, you know. Nope. Sun pouring down. Yes. In North Africa, right, it's right. pretty hot, 110 in shade maybe. Uh -huh. And she never complained. Nope. I like the part where she didn't have no makeup on. All right, Father. How do I know? Because she's working in the field. And all that sweat pouring down. She said, the mascara can't hold up on the other condition. But when was it Boaz yes. came by, a prince. Yes. And he said, who is that pretty girl out there? Wait a minute. She got all work clothes, all sweaty. My goodness. And Got a head come on. All right, Bob, that's right. But boy, I said, who is that pretty girl? Uh -huh. No makeup on nowhere. No earrings swinging. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And the clothes wasn't form fitting. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. So when she walked, you could see her hips. You could see her legs. You know, saved person got no business showing their legs. Amen. Hallelujah. You well know, or a dress. But it's at a proper length. Amen. I've said many times, you could pass by in the old days, a bus stop, and there'd be three women there, and, and you could pick out the sanctified woman from the rest of them. Look at that dress she got on. Almost down to the ground. Look at her face. No makeup on. Right. Hallelujah. Oh. No fancy hairstyle, even right. though that day they didn't understand about the bell coming, but they, their hair was swept back. That's right. Amen. Not fancy. Right. You could tell the difference. And right today, you can tell the difference when a sanctified woman goes in the Walmart or one of these other stores, you can tell the difference. Right. Yes. Because they look at your head cover and look at your dress. Yes. Right. Where's the earrings? Where's the makeup? Where's the lipstick? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Where's the fancy hairstyle? <laughs> she didn't go to the beauty shop last week? They get in the Baptist church. In the Baptist church, they go, they go uh, the beauty shop Friday and Saturday. Sure yes. And then they sleep in a chair. Uh -huh. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? They don't want to mess up their hair do for Sunday. Uh -huh. now, after Sunday, they go to bed and go yep. to sleep. That's right, after they tie their hair up a hundred times, uh -huh. put all them rollers and all that in their hair, pinching their skin and everything. Uh -huh. What? Well, got to look proper going to church. You're not looking proper. You're looking like a bald woman. Amen. Looking just like what you are before. Amen. I shared last week and week before. Amen. If you're not a whore, why do you dress like one? Amen. Why do you want to look like one if you're not one? So there's something down in your spirit. But if God looks past the outward adornment and can see the spirituality of the individual, when he walked past and saw Ruth and then told Boaz, look, and hit, I might have hit Boaz upside the head. Can't you see that beautiful girl out there in that field? Boy, my goodness, look at that pretty girl. You listen to what I'm saying. Outward adornment does not make you pretty. It's what's in the heart. Through obedience to the instruction God gave you. And finally, after God allowed uh, Ruth to go through that last test, out in the field working like a regular field hand. That's right. Now, you're ready. Amen. And called Ruth in. Yeah, man. Hallelujah. And brought forth the seed of Jesus. Amen. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, anytime you think that you're on a mission, that mission is not for you. That mission is to reflect God in you and save a lost soul. Amen. Many have come. And sometimes I watch in amazement Stay for a moment or two, get a few dollars, a few free meals, a couple of showers, and then right back out in that mess in the world. A person with a little tiny baby in his stomach ain't got enough sense to see that God have made a way for you to come in and, and at least have your little baby in the comfort of saved people right, who are going to be a blessing to your baby Amen. and take care of your baby when maybe you at work and can't That's right, turn your back on that. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be surprised later on down the road she go to one of them clinics uh -huh. where they're talking to committing murder That's right, yes. 
and abortion is murder. That's yes. right. Premeditated. Mm -hmm. First degree. Yes. You think about it. That's, that's pre before. Yes. You meditate on it. I'm thinking about it. Yes. Before I do the action. Yes. Amen. And then go ahead and commit the act. Right. I've said before, see, there's a difference between manslaughter and premeditated murder. That's right, Father. See, you, you can be driving and ain't paying attention to what you're doing, cell phone, and all of a sudden you hit somebody and, 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 and they die in the wreck. They can't charge you with first degree murder. Nope. But they can charge you with manslaughter. Uh -huh. there's a difference. One, one, you get life forever. Uh -huh. No, you might, just, you might get out in 20 years. Any time you go to a clinic and then they discuss with you and tell you your advantage of killing a little tiny baby in your tummy. There's something mentally wrong with you. Yes, right. hallelujah. Right. You just as bad as doctors who actually do the operation. Yes. And then go home and watch TV and have dinner with the family. Yep. Honey, did you have a hard day? Oh yes, I had to kill eight babies and the last one didn't want to come out. Glory. Can you please pass the salt and the pepper Glory. while they're eating supper and discussing that murder yeah. that they committed. This is the mentality that's in the country today. I'm not telling you just a fantasy story. I'm right. telling you what is reality today. Right, yes. Them abortion cases, I don't know how many they've killed since they passed that law. That's right. And who passed that law? Who was the underlying current that allowed that law to go into action? Right. Lesbian movement. Right. Yes. Because they hate men and they hate babies, yep. and they hate a woman who's pregnant. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, they've gotten it, and so it, it's supposed to be an unwritten law among women who's supposed to have the freedom of choice. Well, I have a right to kill the baby if I choose to. You ain't got no right to take a life. Right. Didn't like take yours. So they brainwash these women to say, oh, that's your choice. No, but if you stop and think, who got a right to take a life that they did not, are not responsible for in a sense? Mm -hmm. Because all souls belong to God. That's right. yes. All life belongs to God. Yes. Yes. Somebody may plant it, but it's God who gives the increase. Yes. So, when you see the mentality of the country and the way it's drifting today, you know that God's getting ready to come and catch away his church. Yes. Because there's too much decisiveness, too much wickedness, deception is everywhere, and and the devil, now he tries to come into the church and create deceptiveness in the church. Look here. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let no devil come near you. No devil brainwash you. Tell you that this one don't like you, that one don't like you. Hallelujah. Only one you are in the devil is the devil. Amen. Oh, he'll come in the church. Don't tell me he won't. Sons of God gathered to have church, and the Bible says Satan came also among them. Yes. Right. He comes in church. Yes. What? God allows him to. Why? To test your faith. Amen. Are you for real when you say you love the Lord? Amen. Are you for real when you say you're going to follow after him? Yes. Or when you follow after him for a moment, till you get to a place you want to go, mm -hmm. and you think you're going to play the game on the church? And all of a sudden, you got a good job making good money. And all of a sudden, you want to split. Right. I'll get me a nice apartment. Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> but what you going to do later on when Castle hits your body? Uh, uh, right, right. 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 Somebody running the red light and hit you. Uh, right. Not somebody else, but uh, hit you. Right. Oh, hallelujah. God works in mysterious ways. But church is long as we hold on to the Bible and correct teaching of the Bible, you can never go wrong. I, listen, don't never believe. But you can walk up to something and say, well, I, I claim this job, and I claim in a year's time I'm going to be the top supervisor on the job. All right, Father. Don't be silly. Amen. Maybe be somebody got a little bit more senior than you. Yeah, but I, I'm claiming it, naming it and claiming it. You're a fool. All right, Father. <laughs> You think about covetousness. Amen. And that's for yourself. Right. Not decently and in order. Amen. The only thing we can do is get in church and pray to God to bless us. Yes. And carry us through this earthly plane right. without stumbling or falling. Right. That's all you can pray for. Because right. there are traps 
everywhere. But if you keep your mind steadfast on Jesus, Lord. you will never stumble and fall. Yes. Might bump into something every now and then. Hallelujah. That ain't nothing but to wake you up. Hallelujah. We was in the service. They told you if you ever go to sleep on God, Hello. that's a court martial. Yeah, yeah the, the, the proof of the court martial, you carried your weapon, and if they can ease your weapon mm. out of your hand, then they wake you up. Yep. Ooh, you were sleep. Oh no, I want to sleep. Where's your weapon? He you got it. Court martial. In a combat zone, death penalty. Yep. Put you for a firing squad and shoot you graveyard dead. Because you're supposed to be watching for the soldiers, they just fought all day long, and now they got the rest, and you're supposed to watch. You see the enemy coming and sound their alarm? Yep. And you sleep? So would you sleep? We've been fighting all day and you sleep too? All right, oh no. Uh -uh. They don't have that. You got to keep your eyes open, brothers and sisters, because you in a warfare. Give me a, a, a Second Timothy chapter 2. Jump right into verse 1. You're in a warfare. All right. And I said before, the devil don't take no prisoners. Amen. You got to make up your mind. You're going to be ready when the enemy comes. Right. When is he coming? He's coming every day. Amen. Sometimes you don't see him, but he's right around the corner Amen. trying to catch you asleep. Yep. Read from verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses... The same commit thou to faithful men. Oh, wait a minute. Things that you heard of me. The Bible. That's right. Yes. Commit to faithful men. I said the Bible. Things you have heard of me. Yes. The apostle speaking. Not T.D. Jakes. Hallelujah. Not Joyce Miles. Yes. Not Kenneth Copeland. Yes. Not no Baptist pastor. Yes. Problem we have in the church today, you got too many Baptist preachers and too many Baptist churches. Yes. And they created a deception among the people. Well, we all serve the same God. Well, do we? All right. And your church is full of prostitutes and whores. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, what did you say? I said in your church, Baptist church, is full of prostitutes and whores. Why do you say that? Because you can look. All right. And find out. Uh -huh. And the woman was dressed look how? In Proverbs chapter 7, she was dressed how? The young man saw a woman, she was dressed like a harlot. The woman was dressed like a prostitute. Give me Ezekiel right quick. Chapter 23. I want to jump right into verse 40. Let's jump right into the devil with both arms swinging. The Bible, which is a sword. Read. And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far, unto whom a messenger was sent. Yes. And lo, they came, for whom they didst wash thyself, paintest thy eyes, and deckest thyself. You with took a shower and you put your makeup on and you put your jewelry and earrings on. Read. And deckest thyself with ornaments. Uh huh. And satest upon a stately bed and a table prepared before it. Yes. Whereupon thou hast set mine incense and my oil. They were supposed to be saved. Yeah. They were actually Israelites. My oil. In other words, that was a form of worship yeah. among the Hebrew people. Right so this was a woman in a backslidden condition. Yeah. Yeah. Why? She decided to leave holy and go to the Baptist church. Glory. Watch close. Read. And a voice of a multitude being at ease was with her. Various men. Yes. Was with her, right. and with the not man, no one man, yeah. various men. See, fornication is a sin. It's still a sin. Yeah. Yes. Anytime you go to bed with a man you ain't married to him, you have committed fornication. Yes. And yeah. a fornicator is nothing but a whore. Yeah. Right. Y'all know that? Y'all thought whore just meant somebody sat on the street corner? Yeah. No, that, that's that's one uh, 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 term of a whore. Yeah. But you got another term. Any woman who sleeps with a man not married to him, that's a whore too. That's right. Yeah. And with the men of the common sort were brought. Common sort, I mean everybody. Uh huh. Were brought savings from the wilderness, which put bracelets upon their hands mm -hmm. and beautiful crowns upon their heads. Yes. Then said I unto her that was old in adultery. Old in adultery. She had a whole lot of boyfriends. Uh huh. 
Will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? Well, you commit whoredoms with them. How is she dressed? Painted up, jeweled up? Will she commit whoredom? Now the word whoredom is taken from the word whore. That's right, all right. So I said, if you paint it up, I don't care what church you go to, you're a whore. Amen. Yes. According to the Bible. Right. Now you can argue the Bible all you want and get mad. Don't get mad at me, get mad at the Bible. Right. Don't fight me, fight God. Right. Oh, but you can't fight God. Right. Right. You, got enough, you got enough sense in you to know you yes. can't fight God. Right. So you're going to fight his prophet. Right. Keep on swinging. Right. And right. keep on swinging. Right. And I'm going to keep on ducking and dodging. The time I get enough, I tell that when I'm angry, come take care of this situation. Right. Didn't Daniel do it? Yep. They jumped on Daniel so hard and hallelujah. And Daniel's hallelujah, he put his plate back. He said, let me fast my way out of this. And he began to pray and pray. And God said, an angel. And that devil was so strong, he rocked with angel. And he said, wait a minute. This demon is a little too strong for me. Mm -hmm. Let me get on the phone and call somebody. Right, sure Doubt heaven. Sure Say, Lord, I got a problem down your angel. You give me a hard time. Right. Wait a minute. Help is on the way. Uh, uh, Michael, go down and straighten up the problem over here. Uh, Did he come? How many of your Bible should be came? How many? And set down your feet. And told them, stand up on your feet now. Uh, God is an angel. Stand up now. Church, you got to stand up on your feet. Don't be no power, down by no devil. Loose here in the name of Jesus. You got the victory. All you got to do is know you got the victory. Know who your Savior is. Know who your champion is. And know who you are in Christ Jesus. Hold on to God ain't going to let nothing happen to you. Yes. You're going through a test, yeah. All right. But as long as you're on this earth, they're playing, you're going to go through a test. That's right, prophet. What are you worried about? He said, I'll never leave you. But do you believe it? Amen. Wait, I'll never leave you. He never said you wouldn't leave me. All right. Oh, wait a minute. That's another country heard from him. All right, <laughs> Didn't say you wouldn't leave him. Uh -huh. Don't you listen to them hypocrite preachers. Well, once God placed you in his hand, can't nobody take you out. That's true. But you can take your own self out. All right, brother, preach. Hallelujah. Absalom was a favorite son yes. of David. It sure was. But he wanted David to die so he could become king. Yes. So much so it became a fascination with him. Sure and finally the devil put into his mind, when you got enough influence with the army, why don't you just take over the throne? Uh -huh. But to take over the throne, you got to kill David. Yeah. And he took the soldiers. That was really David's army. David didn't have nothing but his personal guard. Yeah. But the person of God and Jesus and more than a whole army. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the servants came to David said, you know, your favorite counselor, now hit the bell. Yes. Do you know he done left you and went with your son mm. in that army? And the battle was raging. And David looked around, my goodness, he didn't have hardly nobody but his personal God. And pretty soon a messenger came. And David wrote that song, The Lord is my shepherd, I what? Shall not want. Leave me beside the still waters. Yes. Hallelujah. Even though I go through the valley and shadow of death, yes. he ain't going to leave me. Right. You hear what I'm saying? I don't care what you go through, God is still with you. I don't care what you go through in that job. I don't care who's probably still against you. God is still with you. As long as you don't leave God, God will not leave you. Look that song. The Lord is my shepherd. And it's so deep, Amen. if you understand, he was going through and facing death from his own son yeah. and his own army and his top advisor yep. left him and joined forces with his own son and his army against him. Yep. Who have I got? My goodness, everybody left me. Yeah. No, you still had God. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. I'll never leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. And David knew it. That's why he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now he's making a statement. That's a statement. The Lord is my shepherd. Whom shall I what? Fear. Once I've said, even though a host should encamp against me, yet will I not be afraid. And David said that. 
Well, he came and said, and, and David did, didn't ask how the battle was going. He said, how's my son? He knew he was going to win. He said, how's my son? Because he loved his son dearly. Oh, you understand, David loved his son. Even to the fact he tried to intercede with God, and he had favor with God. Don't bother my son. Don't hurt him. That's my son. But the son, he went too far. Too far. That's right, right. Yeah. You hear me? Sometimes you can go a little bit too far. Amen. And praying will help you in certain conditions. Right, man. Yeah. Please, don't hurt my son. Yeah. Right. I love him. Right. He went too far. Man. But Lord, I'm, I'm one of your favorites. And he was. Yeah. Man after his own heart. Spare my son. No. Went too far. He raised his hand yep. against my prophet, against my soul, against my spiritual leader. Yeah. He went too far. Another servant came and said, How's my son? He asked how the battle was going. Nope. Dropped his head. Yep. Walked away. Sure Another servant came. He said, How's my son? He said, He lay dead in the field just like the rest of the world. <laughs> and the Bible said, David wept. Church, I'm going to sit down. Any time the devil comes against you with such a force and you think you can't handle it, all you got to do is step back and keep praying and watch. Watch the end. Right before your sight. You don't have to ask how the battle is going. Right. All you got to do is that, Lord, how is that devil doing? Uh, <laughs> he lies there in the field, just like the rest of your enemy. Oh, hallelujah. Hold back to me. Lord, don't let me go. I don't want to be over. Oh, together so blessing clearly amen yeah. give no honor to jesus who's had my life all honor and double honor to the bishop company sponsor is dedicated to the father of jesus i'm a teacher at length that's like the mother walker who ran to the example of the holy woman i'm trying to do he said take he said that you gotta pray at the beginning that will be done yes. all we need is a little more jesus amen we yeah. use a little more jesus all the time amen he said have a made up mind and ask for that spiritual strength, whatever it is, to have that spiritual strength. I thank God for the spiritual strength that we go through. Yes. And he spoke about how Ruth, amen, and Ruth, she believed in Naomi, amen, and like you have to believe in the man of God. A lot of people come in, they basically don't believe, or they don't want to believe, or they just think it's a game. But thank God we have two men of God to follow and sets example for us, amen, to hold on tight, amen, and be a soldier. He's brought out as being a soldier, amen, you have to be a soldier in the Lord. You can't get weak and back down and, and, and be a crybaby. Right. You know, right. my sister's the oldest. We like a year yeah. apart, crybaby. Right. She fall down, I keep falling, get running. But I don't like crybabies, amen. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be a crybaby, amen. He said, keep your eyes open and make your mind up with Jesus. You got to keep your eyes open as the soldier. You can picture them. They, they fighting and then you going to sleep and then you going to sleep too? No, you yeah. keep, no, you you gonna get what you asked for. So you gotta keep your eyes open, as prophet said, in the arm of the Lord, keep your mind on Jesus. Don't worry about he or she, or don't like he, come for Jesus. You know, you gotta come for Jesus. And you know, and if someone speaks to you, just show who they are, really. The character. They don't speak to you, they stare at you, looking like, like they had some a space. Well, you know, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But we gotta keep our mind on Jesus, amen. Have the faith, as prophet said, as, as Ruth, uh, Believe in Naomi, you've got to believe in the prophet, amen. Otherwise, uh, why are we here, amen? So amen. I thank God for the faith, teaching us, prophet, continue to preach to us and tell us to keep your mind on Jesus and follow Jesus and nothing else. You know, you can leave him, like prophet, you know, said, we can leave God, but God won't leave you. But don't leave Jesus, amen. That's the main thing. That is, 
that's what they said, uh, what they call it, the debit card, the cash and cure, whatever you want to call it, the app or whatever. Jesus is everything, amen. Right. Like they had the Visa card. Don't leave home without it. Don't leave home without Jesus, amen. amen. So I thank God for our property, amen. To continue to teach us and preach, preach in your mind and your head amen. what is going on. Like you said, something got to be wrong, but you can get it right, right here. This is the hospital. Yeah. So I thank God for the hospital in Jesus, amen. If you got a headache or you got a heartache or a heartbreak or you need a, a, a breakthrough or, or something, Jesus will fix it. Yes. But you got to want to have it fixed. And that's the thing about Ruth and her sister-in-law. She went on by her business, but she stayed and claved on to Naomi. And she got blessed with Boaz. Amen. Right. And Prophet, I say, thy will be done. I say, you know, Lord, thy will be done. Amen. And because it's going to be done anyway, so why not say pray? Thy will be done. Amen. And I thank God for our prophet and pray my sister Lord. Amen. 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 I'm definitely going to lift him up. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way, closed me in my right mind. So thank God for the powerful word from Prophet. Nehemiah, you mentioned about who are they. They say they're men of God. So, you know, we have to build up the wall. And that's the same thing we have to do, church. You know, God has chosen each and every one of us for such a time like this. And ain't nothing we can do about it. That's why we went to that in the panel. Make your calling and your election sure. God has chosen you, and nothing but you, nothing you can do but accept your calling. And if you don't, you're a fool. So let's all rise and be dismissed. Jesus. Amen. 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 The Lord watch between me and thee. While we absent, one from another. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen.